Hey everyone, and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey, and today I've created the ultimate setup guide for your POW Kitty V10. Like all of my setup guides, I'll leave links in the description to anything that I talk about, as well as having timestamps so you can jump to whatever spot that you need. However, as usual, I highly suggest that you watch from the beginning to avoid missing anything. We're going to be installing ArcOS in this guide, which might confuse you as that's what this device ships with. But it's pretty out of date, and the SD card that it ships with isn't very good, and neither are the ROMs. So this guide is for those that want to do a clean start, for the best chance at success. If that sounds complicated to you, you might want to skip this video, but it really isn't that difficult. As always, before we start, you need to have a branded, quality SD card and SD card reader. We're not going to be using the stock SD card that comes with the device, and that you can throw in the garbage. If you're here before buying the device, I would suggest not buying any of the higher storage options, since you're not going to be keeping the SD card anyways, so just go with the cheapest option available that you can find. Besides the fact that these SD cards are unbranded and low quality, meaning prone to issues and failures, the ROMs are low quality as well, and they have a ton of issues too. A big one is the lack of ability to save progress, which really angers Pokemon fans. I'll be showing you how to find ROMs and BIOS as well, as subtly as I can, so you can have everything you need. For a quality SD card and SD card reader, the Samsung EVO 128GB is the best option, but really any name brand 128GB SD card works. As well, I've been using this Ugreen SD card reader for years, and I highly recommend it. You'll need the reader to connect to your PC. Now, the last thing that you need is your ROMs and BIOS library. If you just want a big list of games and then you can curate them yourself, if you'd like, you can download a ROM pack called the Tiny Best Set. This set comes with a big curated list of ROMs and BIOS files. To help make sense of this page and make things easy, if you have a 128GB card, you want to download the file names Tiny Best Set Go Games.zip Tiny Best Set Go Expansion 64 Games.zip and Tiny Best Set Go Expansion 128 Games.zip. If you have issues with slow download speed, use a program called JDownloader or the Torrent option. Once you download all of those files, extract them all into the same place, and you should have a few folders with BIOS and a bunch of ROM folders. If you want more platforms that aren't available in this package, It'll be on you to source them through Google, Reddit, or I'll leave a link in the description to another video that talks about that. Okay, so you have your SD card, SD card reader, and your ROMs and BIOS library ready to go. Let's move on. As far as software goes, the two things that we need are Rufus and 7-Zip. Head to the Rufus.ie website and download the portable Rufus tool. This is going to help format our SD card as FAT32 especially if your card is above 32 gigabytes, but we just want to use Rufus to avoid issues. Head to the 7-Zip website and download the EXE that matches your Windows version, so it's likely the 64-bit option. Let's also head to the ArcOS wiki, and we're going to grab the OGA 1.1, RGB 10, RGB 10S, RGB 20 image. Yeah, I know, we have a V10, but there's no dedicated image for this device, and we can use this image easily. Download it from the Google Drive or Mega link, and after you've downloaded it, use 7-Zip to extract the zip. Don't forget to extract it because it's the file inside that we need. Connect your SD card to the PC using the SD card reader. Open up Rufus and make sure the device listed is the SD card that you connected. It should just match the drive size. On the right, click select and navigate to the file that you extracted from the ArcOS zip and select the image file. Leave everything else as default and click start and then yes to any pop-ups or warnings. Go check on some loved ones, this is going to take some time. From here on out, after the image is put on the SD card, you might get pop-ups in Windows that say the card is not formatted, or errors with partitions, or anything else. 
Ignore all of that. If you format the card after all of this, you need to redo everything all over again. It's just Windows not knowing how to handle a FAT32 card. Once Rufus is done, you can safely eject the card using the taskbar, and then you want to put it into your device while it's powered off. Then power on the device and it's going to reboot twice. Don't touch anything, let it do its thing. When you see the emulation station menu, that's when you know you're good and ready. Push start, go to quit, and shut down system. Now we can finally add all of our games. Connect your SD card back to your PC. You should see an easy ROMs partition in File Explorer. Head into that. If you don't, open up Disk Management and assign that partition a letter. It should be pretty self-explanatory at this point though, but these are all platform folders where you can put your ROMs in, as well a BIOS folder. What you want to do now is grab your ROMs and BIOS files from the tiny best set collection that we unzipped earlier and put them in the right folders. The folder names likely don't match for a lot of them, so you'll just have to copy the ROM files inside of the folders to the right location on the Easy ROMs partition. If you get stuck and you're not sure what platform is what, check the ArcOS Wiki's emulator page and it'll show you. As well, it'll tell you the right file types and BIOS needed for each platform. For BIOS files, just put them inside of the BIOS folder. Pretty simple. Once you've moved all of that over, safely eject and put your card back in the powered off device. Turn on the device and you should see all of your games set up and ready to go. First up, hotkeys. To adjust the screen brightness, it's the plus button and then D-pad up or down. To adjust the volume, it's the plus button and then it's the D-pad left or right. The minus button is used for hotkeys in game. So let's go fix those now. Go to RetroArch from the main menu and you're going to see two RetroArch instances. We're going to have to do these steps on both, so just pick one for right now. Head to Settings, then Input, Hotkeys, and now let's select Fast Forward Toggle and we're going to make it R2. We could also use the Y button to remove some hotkeys. So I want to remove Reset because that just might screw up everything. And we're going to remove Save State Swapping as well as Screenshots. Let's also go ahead and set Show FPS to Y. So what we did there is it makes it so that when we push the minus button on the device, plus any of the hotkeys on screen, it turns these functions on. Exiting a game is minus plus start. Back out one menu and let's turn off confirm quit. So you don't have to do minus plus start twice to exit a game. Now let's back out again and jump into saving. Right now ArcOS is not saving state on exit. So if you want to enable that, enable auto save state. In the same way, when you load a game, it's not loading the save state automatically. So enable load state if you want to. Personally, I always use both. Back out twice to get to the main RetroArch menu, and then Configuration, and then Save Current Configuration. Quit RetroArch, and now repeat all of those same steps for the other RetroArch version. Next up, since you likely bought this for Game Boy Advance, you might run into games that just don't run well using the default MGBA core. Personally, I would change this for all games. Here's how you change it. Push start at the home screen, emulator settings, Nintendo GBA, and change auto to RetroArch, and then change the core to GPSP. That's it. If you want to change your themes from the main menu in ArcOS, press start, then UI settings, and you'll see a few themes here. If you want to add some more, head to the ArcOS wiki and you'll see instructions on how to do so. For those that want to play other types of games, we have something called Portmaster. This is a bit more involved and it would bloat this video quite a bit, but if you're interested in games that you can port over, check out my guide in the description.
Okay, so now let's talk about adding Wi-Fi, since this device does not have Wi-Fi, but you might want to use it for scraping artwork or retro achievements or updating ArcOS. First, you're going to need this Wi-Fi adapter. Then, you also need this USB-C adapter. Connect both of them, and then connect it to the OTG port on the top of the device. In ArcOS, head to Options, Wi-Fi, and use the trigger to get to the plus sign at the bottom. Select your Wi-Fi network and enter your password. Use the triggers to exit using the X button. Now that we have Wi-Fi, there's a few things we can do. First, head to Options and you want to enable Remote Services. Then go ahead and head to Update. It's going to give you a warning about not stopping the script. Click OK and then you have to write OK. Then set it down and let it update. When all of that's done, we can now add artwork as well. So push Start at the home screen, head down to Scraper, and at this point, if you happen to hit a limit for the number of requests, you'll have to enter your ScreenScraper.fr's website account, username, and password. But if you want to try it without it, you can do so. I don't need ratings or videos, so I'll have that turned off. And if you want actual box art, you can go ahead and choose Box 2D for image source or make any other changes that you want on this page. When you're ready, click Scrape Now, and then you can customize which systems to scrape for, or just do the whole thing. I'm going to do the whole thing, so just click Start whenever you're ready. Lastly, there's Retro Achievements. And this requires you to have this Wi-Fi adapter always connected. So if you're not going to be doing that, you can skip this. First up, you need to make sure that you have a Retro Achievements login, and you can get that from their website. On the device, go to RetroArch from the main menu, and again, you're going to see two RetroArch instances. We're going to have to do these steps on both, so just jump into one. Head to Settings, Achievements, Enable Achievements, and then enter your username and password. After that, back out to the main RetroArch menu, go into Configuration, and save current configuration. Quit RetroArch, and then repeat these steps again for the other RetroArch instance. Now, just jump into some games and have fun. For normal usage, that is all you need to know, and that was the main point of this guide. Get you up and running, and now the world is your oyster. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow. Come join me on the Discord if you get stuck. Support me on Patreon if you like my stuff. And hope you all have a good one.